The nation's oldest and longest serving juvenile offender is free tonight after being released from prison last week. Joe Ligon was 15 years old in 1953 when he pleaded guilty to two counts of first degree murder in Philadelphia. He was sentenced to life without parole. In the end, he served 68 years behind bars. To put that in perspective, when he went in, Harry Truman was president and the polio vaccine was under development. I spoke with Ligon's attorney, Bradley Bridge, this week about his client, his case, and what it says about the criminal justice system. Bradley Bridge, uh, thank you so much for your time tonight. Uh, tell us, first of all, for folks who are not familiar with Joe's story, uh, this case and what happened. Uh, Joe Ligon was convicted of two murders in 1953. Uh, he was found guilty and given a mandatory life without parole sentence. That sentence was ultimately ruled unconstitutional by the United States Supreme Court in 2016. We went before a judge in 2017, and the judge changed his sentence from a mandatory life without parole uh, to a sentence of 35 years uh, to life. 35 years means he'd be eligible for parole immediately. He chose not to seek parole uh, because it was his vision that he had served long enough. At that point, he was like 65 years in prison, and he refused to seek parole. Um, as he had refused to seek clemency back in the 70s. Uh, ultimately, I vindicated what it was that he wanted, which was to get out without being on parole uh, by challenging the mandatory parole term that the judge placed on him at sentencing. Joe was 15 years old uh, when this robbery and assault happened and two people were killed. Uh, what was his role in all of that and what did he share with you over the years? Well, I'm not going to tell you what he shared with me over the years, but I will tell you what I read from the trial transcript from 1953. He still had it in his possession. Um, what it shows is a group of kids. Uh, Joe did not know the kids particularly well. They were from a different school and uh, not necessarily from his neighborhood. Um, he knew only some of them by nicknames. But the group of kids, five or so in number, came down to the center city of Philadelphia, uh, pooled their nickels and dimes together, bought a bottle of wine, drank it, got drunk, had no more money, wanted more wine, um, had several knives, and a group of kids went through the city um, and stabbed uh, about eight people, two people of which died. Uh, Joe uh, admitted at the time that he'd stabbed some people, uh, as one of them had testified against him at the hearing uh, in 1953 in June. Uh, that person obviously did not die. Um, Joe was responsible for what he had done, uh, but he's not responsible for what the other people had done. So in actuality, uh, he's guilty of an assault uh, and robbery, uh, but nothing more. But was found guilty of the mandatory life without parole sentence uh, because he was found guilty of two murders. You have mentioned 68 years of incarceration uh, for your client. Uh, what does that say about our justice system and our criminal justice system and our prisons in the United States? Well, it says different things about the criminal justice system and it says something different about the prison. So let me let me answer each of them. Uh, what it says about the criminal justice system is that we over incarcerate people. We keep them in prison for far, far too long. Um, they certainly the people that are found guilty of crimes um, need to pay a penalty for what it was that they did, uh, but they shouldn't overpay for what it was that they did. Um, that does two things that are uh, harmful. Uh, first, it costs extra money for society. Uh, keeping somebody like Joe Ligon in prison uh, each year probably costs over $100,000 a year to keep him incarcerated. We probably spent uh, multiple millions of dollars in his incarceration. Uh, at some point beyond which, uh, since he's pay if he's paid the price that would be appropriate for the crimes, um, continuing incarceration just wastes money and it wastes lives. Uh, Joe Ligon is getting out now. He's 83 years old. He would has no chance and will have no uh, opportunity uh, to recidivate, he's not going to commit any more crimes. Uh, that would have been true at 73, would have been true at 63. Uh, so we spent additional decades keeping him in prison, um, and that costs uh, all of us money, uh, and it wastes people's lives when they get out there. They're, they're just going to be old, and that's really just not helpful. Uh, that's the impact on the uh, criminal justice system. Have you or Joe heard from the victims or the loved ones or extended family of the victims of that crime uh, back all those years ago? Uh, we have not. Um, when we do the juvenile life or resentencing hearings, the prosecutor's office um, goes out of their way to try to track down and find all the people uh, that are related to the people that were killed uh, when the crime occurred. In this particular case, the Commonwealth was unable to do so because the crime arose in 1953. Bradley Bridge, thank you for your time. You're quite welcome. Thank you. Good day.
Good day to you. Take care.